Hey guys, I'm back. I know it's been such a long time and you're probably all wondering why hasn't she been making any videos? I honestly wasn't feeling very inspired the direction my channel was going in so kind of sat down and talked to the old sister and she has had enough of me sitting there and yapping away about all the shows that I love, all the movies that I love and just giving her a kind of dissecting all these things so she was like just get on a camera and talk about it just stop talking to me about it and I was like wow that is the best idea ever so I thought because I'm obsessed with movies and TV shows I am gonna get on here and use my channel to talk about that because it will be so much easier once it's something that I love so this is my first video back and I really hope you guys like it so today I'm going to be talking about Fantastic Four, which recently came out this week. I was quite lucky to watch a preview of Fantastic Four quite early in the week before it was released to other people. Before that, I'd seen all of these trailers. They've been doing marketing on Instagram and also Tumblr, if you use that, and just a lot of social media sites to get people hyped. And obviously they released their full length trailer a couple months ago, as well as releasing some clips at Comic-Con, which people, which had got people hyped. So it was quite exciting to see, you know, the action stuff that they'd done. The casting was so cool. They had like a cast of actors that I really have loved in all the movies and shows that they've done. So this looked like it was geared up to be a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic reboot of the franchise and obviously Fantastic Four is still owned by Fox, if I'm right. Um, they're still owned by Fox along with X-Men franchise so that whole universe is tied in together. It's not a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and that's how you can tell kind of the difference with the tone of the film. You can see from the trailer already that it's going to be quite dark and a little bit more serious. But going into it, I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be the reboot of a really awesome franchise and this could be the beginning of something awesome where the X-Men and the Fantastic Four can come together in their own Marvel Universe as a part of Fox and do something really awesome apart along with Deadpool of course because Deadpool's also a part of that family but when and then when I went in to watch the movie I came out really disappointed so disappointed because essentially they've done what most movies do and put all their best bits in the trailer there really wasn't much added to it. Obviously this is like the beginning, so it's an origin story. So that is the only thing that I'm kind of not deducting too many points from this reboot. But I get that they wanted to retell the story and retell the story that they've made because obviously the characters are a lot different. Obviously they had to do an origin story and it was going to have to adapt to the casting that they had made with people like Michael B. Jordan, who they have playing the Human Torch, which he is meant to be related to the Invisible Woman, and they had to explain that. But even in the movie, they didn't really explain it. She was just adopted by some black man who went to Kosovo and is like, mm, I'll have her. No, no real explanation of how that happened. We just kind of were muddled in with it and we just kind of went along with it. I was also really excited for Miles Teller to be playing Mr. Fantastic because he is a very talented actor if you've seen him in Whiplash or Two Night Stand or, or Divergent, which I won't hold against him, but he is still really good in those roles. So I thought this was going to be, you know, the making of him joining a really great franchise movie and being the sort of kind of face of this new franchise and he was kind of lackluster. He didn't bring the comedy that I thought he'd bring because he's naturally quite comedic in most of his roles. He is naturally a funny person, I'm guessing, and that's what he brings to most of his roles. But in this one, he was just kind of bleh. And also the ex 
explanation of how they all came together just kind of felt a bit like, oh, let's just throw all these characters in together and hope for something great. Instead of them being blown off into space, this time they were actually trying to teleport into space, which was a really awesome, very creative idea. And Miles, Miles Teller's character, Mr. Fantastic, was the one who'd created it. He'd been creating it since he was a kid, working on it in his garage, and then happened to find these people at his school science fair who came and recruited him and decided, you know what, you are what we need in our massive science program and you are going to get us teleporting across space and time. And essentially that is how the whole movie begins. Victor Von Doom's character is actually the only character that I think they actually got right. From the minute that he steps on screen, Toby Cable is kind of the embodiment of young adult angst because he's not exactly a teenager but he's a young adult he's got that young adult angst thing he has this like love for Susan Storm that's not quite explained as to why it's not working or why he's not making a move and he's also got this thing against government and the establishment but you kind of get the idea that he's not that bad a person so finally they build this teleporting device together, him and Mr. Fantastic. They build this teleporting device and they're able to jet off and go out into this unknown planet which they've been sort of sending stuff back and forth. And when they do finally make this massive breakthrough by sending organic material into this other planet and bringing it back safely, the people who run the program are ready to take it away from them and actually get just astronauts to go out there and explore this new world and this really pisses everyone off that's been working on the project because they're like the same thing happened with Neil Armstrong was he the first man to actually create you know this whole the ability to travel into space no he was just the man who was chosen for the job so they decide to go rogue and one night just go to this mysterious planet and when they go, it's all cool, they're enjoying themselves. Wow, look at this funky new place. And then shit gets real. Some people touch some stuff they weren't meant to touch and they have to get back straight away. And that is about as much action as you get really. Them running away and trying to get back into the pod and obviously Victor Von Doom gets lost into that planet. And then when they get back, they've all kind of, this is when their abilities start to show and they are taken into Area 51, which is, you know, obviously where the government apparently keeps all their aliens and all the stuff that they find that they don't want the public to know about. And they start doing tests on them. And Miles Teller's character, Mr. Fantastic, is able to escape and run away and the others take this as a thing of he ran away and left them to, you know, be used by the government as military operatives. So the guy who becomes the thing he's used and sent out on these missions. First of all, one of my issues with the guy who was made into the thing is that the effects that they used to make him seem a bit sloppy. They just, you just, you could tell he wasn't, it wasn't on the same par as I will compare it to the Hulk in the Avengers movies where it kind of seems very seamless for him to be in a scene with other all the other superheroes. This guy just seemed to just be kind of not there and also the scenes where he was fighting other people it just seemed very it didn't seem very organic but that's just something that I might have noticed with my weird eyes and Obviously, when they get spotted back, the the Area 51 people are promising them that they will fix everything and sort it out, but really they have no intention of doing that. They want to just use these kids to be their own personal little military. And then they rebuild the teleporting machine because it had been destroyed previously, and they are going to jet them off, jet some scientists off to the other planet to find the organic material to make more people like this only when they get there 
none of it is left none of whatever the energy that gave them the powers that they have is left and it's all wrong and all you see is like this creepy hooded character coming out of the shadows and it is dun 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 victor von doom but he's become doom just doom and he's very angry he's telling them to get off his planet because it is now his planet he's been there for a year and he has taken it and it has kept him alive all this time but giving it all its energy force and he's basically now the physical embodiment of that energy and when he's brought back he basically decides he wants to destroy earth because humans will destroy everything and it's basically down to the Fantastic Four to come together as a team and fight him. And that's when the action takes place. And even then, you're kind of just like, oh, this isn't entertaining anymore. This is just boring. You're, you're drawing everything out. This, I don't even care if Doom destroys the world at this point. Maybe if he destroys the world, then this will end sooner. And then finally, it gets to like this kind of the bit of the movie where we're meant to have our hearts ripped out as in Avengers when they killed Steve here they kill the human torch and Susan Storm's dad and really you have no real love for the character you've never you haven't developed any feelings for the character to the point where you're actually upset about his death you're just kind of like meh and even watching the actors cry over him you're just like they don't really believe that they're sad about this death it happened and it's just a thing that happened and then they all decide to band together and fight Doom and stop him from trying to turn the world into one big black hole. Which, you know, obviously they end up defeating him in some weird plan that they make that really had no... Yeah, it didn't really stick out and I guess my review of that is that it was just very disappointing. The whole movie was meant to be a bit more... I think all it needed was a few more light-hearted moments, maybe not have such a dark tone and stop trying to be Man of Steel or The Dark Knight. DC has that, that's their thing, keep, let them keep the darkness and that dark tone. Marvel is awesome because it's kind of light-hearted, it's just superheroes at the end of the day, let's not take ourselves so seriously and that's what this movie seemed to do, it seemed to take itself super seriously and think that, try and explain the science as if it was some sort of Christopher Nolan project, like Gravity or something, but really no, we just want to see them become the Fantastic Four and then straight away start fighting the bad guys. But that just took half the movie, that by the end of the movie they just about got their powers and they were still trying to master them to the point where they could fight doom and that scene was just the last 10 minutes of the whole movie which i don't think is very satisfying so maybe they're gearing up for the sequel to try and bring more action bring more things but to me it seemed no different from their first outing with the first two Fantastic Four movies, which weren't a major success for people who loved the comic books with the Fantastic Four. And I know that Fox were trying just to make this movie, just to be able to keep the rights to Fantastic Four so that they wouldn't have to, you know, give them back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which really I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe knows what it's doing at this point when it comes to their movies they know the right formula in order to make a good movie like Ant-Man which recently came out that no one really had any expectations for and it's done so well and as well as Guardians of the Galaxy no one really thought that was going to be anything and look that was like a massive massive success for Marvel so they have the recipe down and I don't think that this Fantastic Four movie was a great reboot. It was very disappointing, kind of dull, kind of boring. I didn't really find the movie very entertaining and I think the sequel may bring a bit more action if they get a sequel. Ooh. Anyway, I hope you didn't mind me ranting to you guys like this, but this is my new direction. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys have any comments to add down below. Tell me what you thought of it. If you liked it, if you think I'm a stupid idiot, fair enough. Tell me. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I will have another video for you soon. Thanks. Bye.